Hey, how are you doing guys? Today I want to talk you through how I got an Ironman in under 10 hours, what I did in my training in details from session to volume to everything, how I get it done and what you maybe can learn from it to do it yourself. So to go back a bit in time, 2012, I finished my first Ironman self-coach with a little book. I have everything written down. We can also go into that training in another video if you want. Uh, there I finished the Ironman Switzerland in 11 hours and 18 seconds. Uh, that was my first finish, was over the moon. Then one year later, I thought I got this figured out. I started at Ironman Bolton and I thought Ironman, I got this figured out. And I raced the first 60k on the bike like nuts, like crazy, super hard. Also had like a weird strategy with nutrition. I had like three or four bars an hour. <laughs> Everything was in my gut and I was going side to side on the road and actually that was my first DNF and I was in a medical tent and that it wouldn't want me to continue. So there was that, after that big failure, I was really like, okay, I need some help with this triathlon thing. So I approached my first coach, Ute Mückel, big shout out to her, she's amazing. Did an amazing job on me, building me up. And after just three, four weeks of fine tuning, we did Challenge Henley, Ironman Distance in the UK. And there I actually finished first in my age group in 10 hours and 20 minutes, something like that. I was over the moon just with those few changes that she did. One year later, 2014, I again finished 10 hours and 18 or 10 hours and 15, something like that. 2014, Ironman Frankfurt. It was 38 degrees, it was boiling in the heat. I was really thinking this is gonna be the one where I go sub 10, but still didn't happen. And then one year later, Ironman Copenhagen, there I finally did it. I finished in nine hours and 40. The night before I had super much pizza, that much, and really squeezed it in until like 11 p.m. I thought I got an Ironman, I gotta eat more. I had so much cheese and all that in my belly that the next morning I literally had one cracker of breakfast. And on the bike as well, the screws of my bike exploded in the front and had the steering in my hand for the last 10K. But all that, that's Ironman and sometimes you have those. I overcame that somehow and I was over the moon to still finish in 9 hour 40s, under 10 hours. All right, let's dive into the data, look into my training plan on Training Peaks. I have everything since I started triathlon in 2013, 14. Anyways, we're gonna go three months ahead of my event, 23rd of August in 2015, where I went sub 10 hours. We're gonna go through the training, things I did, things now looking back, I see this is what I did really well, knowing what I know now, and also looking back at what I probably went wrong from there. So you know a little bit, okay, what is something that does work for someone and maybe also works for me. I worked full time back then. I had a job five days a week, obviously. Uh, physiotherapy, so like sometimes we're working mornings, sometimes evenings, but very taxing work. And uh, let's go into it. Before you actually go into the work, I want to show you a little bit something that, that I pointed out, uh, I saw, which is for example here Urlaub, that means like holiday. When I had holidays, I had complete off. That is something that to be honest changed and especially nowadays with everything, the knowledge out with the Norwegians training gazillion hours and you feel guilty of not taking holidays. That's something I, looking back the last three, four years when actually I didn't perform as I wanted, I would say this is definitely something I did wrong. Like she forced me to take holidays. For example, after Ironman's off season was four weeks complete rest and I was more consistent than ever. Each year I got better. So a lot of people have fear. That's my biggest tip, number one, to be honest. And a lot of us are guilty of that, that we just more and more Christmas time, we gotta train and push and push. And when you listen to the greatest in the sport, which is for example, Mark Allen and all those, when you go into their history, they took massive off seasons. Even someone like Ronnie Coleman, the bodybuilder, long, long off season. The ones that were consistent year after year took a proper, proper break. And that is something you don't think and how it's nowadays talked about. But that's something I can see here as well in my training plan back then. I had proper breaks mentally, physically to reset. So then we're here in March. What I can see, for example, is that I ran around three times a week on average. I swam twice and something average wise hours. I was sitting between 12 hours, I would say a lot on average, sometimes bigger week, here already 17, but then it drops often again to nine. Also something I see is that oftentimes I had actually red and yellow in my plan, looking back to now, which is like the OCD kind of, ah, I can't have that. So I was just going a lot more by feel of the body really wasn't feeling it. That's also something she really forced as a coach that if you're not feeling well, 
you should take rest. Running duration wise, when you look here a little bit to the side, I ran around three hours per week, which isn't a ton. Here even two and a half, three, four. Not a lot of running volume per se, but she kept a consistent ticking week over week. That's something that's really important. A lot of red in there still, but I kept ticking over. He had a massive week of a training camp. That's beginning of April here. We went to 36 hours, but also afterwards again was a bit rest. I did a lot of quality in terms of it wasn't just easy and it took me actually years, five, six years to build the base to actually run an Ironman the back end that I actually feel I'm not dying. But what I can see here is for example, I did a lot of quality in running, some sort of quality, all in the aerobic range. But if your training would work, let's say 10, 12 hours, you cannot do only, only super easy. And with easy, I mean zone one stuff. If you have to choose between zone one and zone two, which heart rate wise, you really have to know why you sit there. There is a difference. Zone two, you get more bang for your buck except for the long run end of the week, there you should always do it nice and easy. Then here, volume wise, I was sitting around 15, 16 hours. That's actually quite a bit next to work, but I did it especially in the weekend. There were long sessions. You can see Saturday, almost three hours, Sunday, three hours. So there I got a lot of volume, which during the week wasn't so possible. I always had one full rest day during the week. And even here in race week, another rest day. There was a 70.3 in Switzerland as well. Da kommt er! Matti, geile Nummer, jetzt gibt's alles. Spike, deine Sache. Du bist so gut wie drin. Du bist so gut wie drin. Gott, bist du stark. I believe there was on a podium, so that was already a good sign. That was early June. When we go further here, again, the running volume stays around the three hour mark. So it's not a ton, but here, for example, let's take the Wednesday. They had a tempo run, four times 4K, just like the high aerobic pace, uh, a bit quicker. Then I had brick sessions as well. So I ran off the bike, the classic ones. Then we continue here, we had nine hours, eight hours. He have a sprint distance coming. So I had two races before. Um, you can see it's quite continuous. It's like one or two sessions, but sometimes just a 15 minute run, sometimes core. It's nothing insane during the work week that overloads me with a full rest day in there again. There here I have a sprint distance triathlon. That is actually an overall win for me, triathlon. I remember that one. I was really surprised to that. That was uh, something I didn't expect at all. Again, volume wise, we're sitting around 14 hours, 15, 16 here. There's a half distance again, race week. They added 426 in Challenge Poznan, Poland. Go further, six hours the week after, 13 hours, another half distance two weeks later, just under five hours on a very challenging course. Then we continue six hours the week after, 17 hours. That is then already the race week of Ironman Copenhagen. So to sum it up, what I can say is I trained around between 12 to maximum 15 hours a week. Important is year by year I improved. I had the long off season, I had holiday, I had at least one rest day a week, which is super important when you work, that you have the balance, something I for sure later when I wanted it more, I definitely messed up and she as a coach did a tremendous job to holding me back. Talking about coaching, I will be coaching a limited number of five athletes only. I want to help on the athletic journeys. All the details are on my website. You can see everything that, how I work, how I approach the sport. And if you have any questions, you can for sure schedule a free consultation. So we just have a chat and see what you need. And all this work resulted here. We can check the result list from 2015 resulted in a one hour one swim, 508 bike. Again, there for the last 10K at the handlebars in my hands, literally. And there the run, a 326, which I was really happy with. And all that from three times running a week, three to four hours max, consistent. Always a bit of quality in there, injury free, not too hard, not too easy all of the good mixes and keeping consistent. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, follow me along on my journey from my pro C 
season, the first one. If you enjoy someone seeing getting his head battered in for another two years, because that will be me, I'll be crawling from the rankings from the bottom up, but we will get to the top, I promise you that. But this will take time and it will be a nice journey and I do all I can to enjoy the journey and take you with. Have a good week and see you in the next week's video.